I don't need to tell you that it's been turbulent times for the housing markets. Uh, prices since COVID rising 20%, but now the latest predictions from the Office of Budget Responsibility forecasting a 9% drop by autumn of next year, uh, year rather. Landlords selling up en masse as they face higher mortgage rates, reduced tax relief and uh, other costs disrupting, of course, that buy-to-let business model. Well, uh, let's get the views now of what the housing market may be bringing us uh, in the new year. TV property expert Martin Roberts. Martin, thank you very much indeed for, for joining us. Um, you're a dab hand at spotting the bargains, of course, with uh, Homes Under the Hammer. But are the bargains all disappearing now, given what's yes. happening with the, the housing market? Sorry, I'm just polishing my crystal ball here to see if Good. I can uh, help. It's... Um, I think the eyes are all on it, aren't they? The eyes are definitely all on the housing market at the moment, and everybody uh, is worried about what will will happen. And, and it does make good news, uh, or rather news, to talk about it. And uh, so many people jumping on the bandwagon of saying it's all doom and gloom, la di da di da. And, and I would take you back to the start of lockdown when exactly the same doom wingers were out there saying how terrible it was all going to be. Really, really influential people predicting 25 to 40% drops in house prices at the start of lockdown. And we saw absolutely the opposite. We saw 25% increases, stuff that, that um, nobody could have predicted. And the housing market is resilient. It does go through ups and downs. It is a long-term or medium to long-term strategic investment. And it, it will have cyclical moves. You know, at times it does drop down, at times it goes up. And that's just the way it is. But if you look back over history, it's mm. always carried on in the same direction. So what I would say to people is, is at this point, just don't panic and don't believe what you read. And if you're not in the market for selling or buying, don't worry about it. Just, just don't even, it's a dinner party conversation. It's a feel good factor to know your house is going up in value. But if you're not in the process of moving, just don't worry about it. And if you are in the process of trying to buy, you could see any potential drops as a bit of a bonus because instead of going out of reach, house prices are may be coming down to something which you might be able to negotiate a deal on. And I'd say to anybody in that situation, use all the negativity to your advantage. So if I'm negotiating at this point, I'm pointing out all the doom mongers and I'm finding the worst case scenarios to present the person I'm potentially buying from uh, to negotiate myself a better deal. So, um, you know, first time buyers, people who aren't in the housing market yet, yes, they've got to do a few more things to get there. But I, I, I would not, again say that, that things are doom and gloomy for them. Um, bear in mind that when the mortgage market review came in, uh, following the 2007-2008 sort of problems, uh, they factored in increases in interest rates and they made yeah. affordability to a point of the levels beyond where they are right now. So yeah. we've all got used to low, le low, low interest rates. We've all got used to silly, unbelievable interest rates. But historically, even if you get in a mortgage at 4 5 6%, it's still cheap in the whole history of, of lending of money. Yeah, however, of course, obviously people are having to actually borrow a lot more of the value of the house in terms of uh, looking at uh, their uh, wages, you know, five, six times their, their earning capacity, of course, and, and therefore if house prices do drop, they, they've got this awful thing of negative equity hanging over their, uh, their heads. However, um, given the fact that we're being told interest rates may start to, to peak uh, into spring and summer next year, um, a lot of people are wondering, when do I jump if it, I, I'm a first-time buyer particularly, uh, and what's happening with the mortgage market? Because, of course, uh, a lot of those fixed deals coming to an end for people. So it did go through this chaotic four weeks, didn't it? Yeah. Which nobody could have predicted. And, and everything went into a, an unprecedented turmoil, certainly with mortgage brokers. If you talk to them now, things have settled down, OK, and rates are starting to drop. If you're, if you're looking to buy those, those crazy rates that, that, that were a bit of a knee-jerk reaction that came in, they have, they have been replaced by, by lower rates. So at least that's a move in the right direction. And what the markets don't like is instability. And what we've got at least now is a bit of stability. Well, not in the world, but, <laughs> you know, in our financial, in our financial, immediate financial environment. Yeah. Obviously, the cost of living crisis is, is a worry. And as are, you know, just the general, general feeling of uncertainty. Um, but but I, I just counsel people to just, just don't panic. You know, 
it, it, it is cyclical, and I'm not a doom monger. There aren't enough houses in this country. There's a huge demand, and and if you're looking to rent, or you know, if if you're thinking about the the idea of renting, just remember that often, even at a slightly higher interest rate, you know, owning your own place and paying a mortgage is going to be cheaper uh, than renting. And I think a lot of landlords are going to be under a lot of pressure to pass on well, uh, yeah. some of their own increased costs, understandably. Uh, to the people who are renting from them. So I, I fear that that, that that focus should be more on what's going to happen in the rental market. And you can slightly insulate yourself from that by trying to get into the housing market and use maybe the negativity to, to negotiate yourself a better deal.